Welcome back everyone. In today's video, I'm going to show you exactly how to import Juniper vJuno switch and vJuno's EVO images into the EVNG setup. Now, whether you're studying for JNCIA or JNCIS or even JNCIP, now creating a home lab is the best way to master the real world Juniper networking skills without spending a fortune on the physical hardware. By end of the tutorial, you'll have everything that you need to build your own virtual Juniper lab and accelerate your certification journey. So let's jump right Why in. practice with Juniper in EVNG? Well, EVNG lets us simulate the real world Juniper devices without needing a physical router or a switch. Now, perfect if you're working on a budget or just trying to learn something. With these virtual images, you can practice all the important concepts like VLAN, spanning tree, routing protocols, firewall filters, just on your laptop. If you look at the nine nodes that I have, if I go to Juniper here, there is a whole bunch of options here. The only one that you see that I have so far is the Juniper VXX switch, right? Now choosing the right image for your laptop is, is super important. Choosing the right image for your laptop is super important. Most of us are running these labs on laptops or just small PC. Now Juniper VMX or Juniper VQFX can require a lot of RAM and CPU. So if you're limited on resources, Virtual Juno Switch is lighter, which is this one right here. Or Juno's EVO is newer, but it can also be as compared to Switch a little heavy, but it still compares all the other options, the second option I'm looking at. I'll focus on just these two images to give you an idea how to install them and get started. Now, where to get these images? First of all, you can actually go to the Juniper website itself. What I can simply do is I can go open up Google. I can just say Juniper virtual images. And the first link that I get is the one that I really want. This is for virtual Juno switch and virtual Juno's evolved. You click on this one here and it actually takes you to the one that you want to download. Right now, this gives you different versions that you want. I always like to go with a few older ones and also you will need to make sure that the one that you pick up is actually compatible with your EVNG. If you go to, for example, the switch one right now, so if I go to EVNG and it's talking about the 23.1 R1, so I know for a fact that that is going to work. So that's the one that I will pick up. It's an old one. Yes. But again, the newer ones won't have too many differences, just minor differences. So won't hurt me too much for now. This is a good one to start. Right. And as you know, that EVNG uses the KVM images. So that's the one that I really want. And you can just click on click on download and let the image come in, which will take some time. You click on that and you will have to agree that, OK, I'm going to be downloading this image. You proceed and you download it. If you want to download it on the local host, you just click here and the image download really starts, which it starts in this case. Now, these are big images, so it might take some time. Now, what I also do is I'll image two as well, which is the other one that I want to download. So I also want the evolved one. So I'll do the same thing what I did for the switch one. And I go to the option that is they're talking about the 23.1. That seems to be like the stable version of it. So, but we just go on with that as well. Evolved, same thing, pick up 23.1, right? And make sure it's a KVM image and you click same idea. I can download it by clicking here. And that's how you download your images. Now, since we're on the download image option, uh, and I will make sure that I put all these in the description links for you, uh, there is another resource. You can go to this option right here. If you're looking for other images, they are right here as well. Uh, if you have a server that can run a whole bunch of stuff and you need to run uh, VMX or even the QFX, which I told you that are a little heavy on the resources, but if you that's the ones you want, by all means, you can go ahead and download it from here. OK, so I'll make sure that I leave you all the with all the links in the description of the video. The next important thing I want to mention is EVNG likes to make sure that you have a certain folder in a certain name and the file inside is also in a certain way. So if you look at the switch first. The file name should the folder name should be this. If it says folder name, it should be this with the version that you have, or you can just leave it up until here with dash anything you like. Uh, the reason they suggest this is so you know that which version are you going to be running, right? Uh, and the name of the file that you're going to be using is going to be this one right here. So if you look at it, it says you need to be Virtua or whatever you like to call it, dot QCOWQ. Okay, so what I like to do generally is I like to download my files beforehand 
And once I've downloaded the files, then I like to move them all into my folder, right? So for example, in this case, what I've done is for the switch, I have created the folder and I called it vjuno switch. This was based on this right here. I haven't put any version in this case and inside the file name is virtua dot qcow dot q let me show you what i'm going to do for the other one right let's say if i was doing for the the router option same thing i want to make sure that this is the actual folder name right i can copy that now i can go back to my folder right and i can right click create a new folder in this case make sure i call the folder that now this is the actual file name right which has to go in but the name has to be just the virtua so let's take that and move it into this right so it's here now and dot qcow2 is fine but the file name has to be this right here which is so we'll do right click copy rename the file that's your file name and you're done right the next thing you want to do is now I'm going to move it into my EVNG, right? So this is something that if you follow the series that you know exactly how to create EVNG setup and how to move those files into the, into the QEMO folder. So I'll just open that up quickly. That's your QEMU folder. This is my laptop on this side. I'm going to just make sure that I'm still logged in and I am. So this is the folder that I want to move and it's going to take a few minutes and then it's going to be inside there. It's actually pretty quick. So moving fast there. And the next thing we want to do is, and the software we're using is WinSCP. You could even use some other one if you like, but generally the documentation is all around uh, WinSCP and that's what I have used and it just works perfectly. Now, once you've done that, the next thing is also going to be fix your permission. So that is basically achieved by going to the actual EVNG here, right? And running this command, which is this one right here. And, I'll, and once that's done, it should not come back with any errors what this basically does is just make sure that the all the permissions are the way that the evng expects and again you have some videos on the channel explaining you all that and that's all done and once that is done i can go back to my apology and i will just reload it node and now you'll notice that with juniper we should have more options let's let me kind of restart this quickly so I'll simply close this lab and I'll open just another lab. And now let's say right click node. And if I type in Juniper, okay, so I just close the lab, open it up again. Another thing I made sure is I just went here and I just copied the main folder name. So I added the 23.1 as well. Uh, again, easily can be done. I can right click here rename and then you can rename it too so i made sure that both the file names are the ones that i have inside but inside if you notice both of them are going to be virtua and virtua.qcow that's the inside the file names are same uh but obviously one is a switch one is a you know, juno's evo and then once i've done that i can right click node and i just quickly type in juniper and you'll notice that i have a switch that i can just see how many cpus it it gives you some recommendation so use that for now let's start that switch to make sure it starts now we go ahead and also add another router there right click start and we'll let them start and if you double click on that this will open up the actual i'll open up this one as well this is my old file close that for now and if you notice that it's starting up, it does take some time though. So let's see how long does it take. I'll pause the video and let you know how long did it take to come up. So almost 15 minutes, I would say it took to kind of have this thing up and running. The default login, I think was root. And that's how I get into my Evo and switch. I think it's the same. I'll just go root and that gets me in. And now I'm able to run any command. One other thing I want to show you is the actual CPU. It does take a lot, I feel. Uh, just two devices running mainly. Uh, memory, you can see it's almost, uh, everything is consumed when it's up and running. Uh, my laptop is about 32 gigs. Yeah, it does seem that it is a little intensive on the CPU. 
So just a heads up when you're running uh, on your smaller laptops with anything less than 16 gig, it might be very tough to have these labs up and running. But again, if you're just running a couple of devices just to get the hang of the actual OS, uh, configure some devices here and there, uh, it's a perfect solution. I don't see a problem. And especially if you're preparing for any of the certification, I feel, uh, like if you're studying for GNCIA, uh, using just a single device just to learn basic CLI navigation, commit checks, simple routing protocols uh, or for GNCIP or GNCIE, you want to multiple nodes to test more complex topologies like MPLS, BGP, EVP, and et cetera. You need to make sure that your laptop is at least uh, 32 gigs or up if possible, or at least a server that is uh, having more RAM. Just last thing I want to leave you with is if in case you're looking for any troubleshooting, make sure you always check for compatibility. Now, that's why I said I used the versions that were mentioned in this. So I knew that those versions are going to work. And it is, is it compatible with your EVNG build? If you have an older EVNG build, right, uh, it might not work. So you're going to make sure that your EVNG is uh, latest. I'm running the community edition, which is free and um, uh, running this image on which it seems like it's working fine. And in case your device doesn't boot up, uh, I read on some of the threads, it said that you need to allocate more RAM or virtual CPUs in case it doesn't show up and you try to kind of, you know, start or with something less than what's recommended. So yep, just a couple of words there. And I hope that was helpful. Now you know how to import vJuno switch and vJuno ZVO into EVNG. It's a straightforward process, but requires a careful attention to the folder structure and the permissions. Now, if this was helpful, hit the like button, subscribe, and let me know in the comment section, what else would you like to see? Maybe some advanced Juniper lab demos or troubleshooting sessions. Well, thanks for watching this one, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.